We really have to give the people what they want and what do they want. They want, pops. they want skids. Like, what do we need to fix it? Ideally, we need another e shaft and another cedar plate. Has this got extra dowels in it, Billy? Yep. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm draw all these ones up. What, so, just in the press here? Just in the press? press. Just get them off. Hand drill. Yeah. Hand drill, roll um, Just use the, um, use one of the plates as a uh, template. Battery plate? No, it's a battery. Push it back in the Oh, yeah. Ha <laughs> ha! Unfortunately, Bill's rattle gun seems better than that. Bill, you haven't got another rattle gun? Yeah, that's a bigger size too. When you're working on it, it's a bit stubborn. What's your oil, Billy? Remember that's what you do. What did you do? Drop keyway in there? Is it stuck in? So yeah, old uh, suction doesn't. Always hit oil. It. No, 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 we get sick of running some gaskets, you've got to run longer bolts and they're quite expensive, they're like, I don't know, like 80 bucks, 100 bucks for a sum gasket. Yeah. Yeah. So we quite often look at, when I was coach building we used to rough them up. We'd rough them up with rough paper, rough the alley plate up with... Um, oh yeah, I can see all those marks on the, the yeah. housings. So what the bro's done is by dimpling that, it gives the uh, silicon somewhere to go there. into. So I, this is where me and the bro will do things different. But he, he does cool things like this that other people wouldn't think about doing. Do you normally replace them if you can? <laughs> oh, yeah, they're like three hundred dollars, man. No, no, I'll just find a real good one. So very it's carefully time. pull oil that away, pump. so we don't lose the guts of it. So the oil pump's real clever and really interesting by itself. Oh, it doesn't want to come out. So those lines are a good indicator of what's been going through the motor. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, I mean, see that big deep one? Personally, I probably wouldn't use that again. All right, for probably like a skid car build or if you had nothing to use, then yep, by all means. As it's stuck on, sometimes they start locking on, eh? Where's that green crowbar you had? It shouldn't be that tight, but it should be nice and... See that bit of discoloration there? Yeah, that's so these are the needle rollers. Uh, these are when you set the end float, that's the end float spacer. Even what's the wheel like on that bro? Good look at the back of that. It does seem to have that seal. It's got a split in it. The, the wood oh, there, bro. Look. See, just there. The wood goes keys in this somewhere. Oh, has it fallen in? No. Got a magnet just before we pull it off? No, it falls. 
move over the side too. Yep. Hang on, wait. Oh, Russell tape just come on. Hey, would you open for that? Would you open in there? Oh, you want to get in the work on too? So corner seals, side seals, oil control rings, lightened rotors. Bearings walk out, bearings walk out, bearings oh, yeah. spun, rear bearings spun. Told you. Yeah, so that... Do I drop? No. Do I have a corner seal or something? No, no, it's got it. Got it. Oh no, I he's found it. So let's take these on, I'll scrap them over. Just pull, that should come up easy. Just uh, money, these are gonna just pop out. Got anything to, um? Yeah, where's the water seal? Wrap the water, the water seal around it as we pull it. I'll use the water seal again, mate. Hey? Oh, you want to use it again? Yeah, I'll Grab that other apex chain? Yep. There you go. Let's go straight to the table. All good. Sometimes they'll polish up. I don't think that one will. It's so actually, I can see a bit, bit of mirror bearing slag like welded to it there. Jeez, it's... It's welded into it, eh? It's yeah, that's a bit of the bearing sitting on there. So we've got to get these dowels out next. Housing will come off. Then we push the crank up. And then we push the crank up. We've got to hook the plate around, around that load. You see this one here? The bearings walk right over it. What causes them to stick? Uh, high revs. Get a lot of wobbling. Bearings. Bearings also got a bit loose. That this bearing here is obviously spun this bearing and then which made this. You move on the shaft, you move on that shaft, and it's just gone like this. All these shafts hit both plates. Hence these. And that's where the rotors hit. That's so it had a large bridge port at one point? Yeah, yeah, it was large bridge port, yeah. Yep. Did it's you do... Um, all the seals. You Shane can, no seals. You can use those again? Yeah, use those again, mate. No drums. These ain't too bad, though. Any uh, big grooves, and you know, wear, excessive wear anywhere. Cracks maybe through here. Get your crack through your spark plug holes. Can you tell me the difference with the trailing and the leading spike? How that works? Oh, so when it's going around, the leading one goes off first, so the trailing one just picks up any of the excess gas in there. And so that's leading, this is uh, trailing the little hole. Um, and the big boys put another spark plug in up here, eh? third one, just to make sure they make sure everything explodes off, goes off. Um, the only other thing we kind of check on here will be um, inside here, the, the width in between here and here. Just have to get the tool for that. Tidy. Tidy there. That's nice and tight. Right there. It's usually, it's usually this area here, it, they shrink. That's what it is, man. We're going to use this housing in here for sure. So, salvageable. Salvage First part, I'll give it a stone off. Give it a good stone off and see what happens. Really, you know, you want to change it, I think. That's okay, but see that face there? We'll be alright. Yeah, go on. I just use a uh, 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 wheel stud. Oh, so it's center plate? Mm -hmm. You see, if you, get, if you rub your finger on it, you can feel these massive like, grooves. Like, uh, there's burn marks. Actually, yeah, it's not the best. Uh, Yeah, so you can now you see with the stone, the stones just to make everything flat, right? You can see it here, it's got these, that big dark, the dark bits there, that's a big grooves on it. Well, that's just taking all that face off that, and that's, so when your uh, side tool's got a scraper of that, it's going to, it's just a weird, you're going to lose compression through that. Um, yeah, not the best. I'm not saying it wouldn't work, but you know, you want to pull some numbers, you guys. You can get away with a lot if you, if you have to. If that's all you got, you know what? I can spend 
tree I was stoning it and trying to resurface it and get it as flat as I possibly could. Oh, oh here's it. So, big grooves in there. So this one. So you can see with the bearings going on it. Okay, so all this is on, on here. That'd be really hard to get off. You won't be able to get that off. And if you, you can polish a lathe and you just never get it properly. It'll just pretty rough. There'll be, there'll be bearing material on there. There'll be bearing material right way through the shaft and all through the uh, wall system. So, and, it, and all, you all it takes is one of those little flakes of gold that was in the sump to go into the um, into one of those little holes, block it up, boom, you lose all pressure. Like, you know, front of me. You can actually see it in there. Just watch those apex seals, Bob. Get, uh, see if you can get the thing up. Yeah, got one inch. Yeah. Oh, oh. I don't know if you've ever seen here, but on this bearing here, so because the real one's fun, you'll see the, the whole little orange dots all over here. Like just tiny little orange dots all on your bearing. Well, that's actually the bearing material from the rear bearing that's gone through the oil system and it's picked up on this bearing. So eventually, the front one, if you just keep running it, obviously the front one will end up blocking up. I don't know why. I don't know why nobody can make an oversized bearing. I'm talking fouls, you know. Um, you know, you can machine this out, machine this surface up, and they machine this out of foul, you know, get that on another clean tape uh, surface. The bigger OD and it's uh, the same size ID, um, and then we can just put different size bearings in. So it's obviously going to be a f up if you go buy a motor and you go to change it over. There's nothing wrong with the actual rotor on the outside, or you know, it's just the bearing. So if you replace the bearing in here now, there's a chance, a high chance that because of all these grooves in here, it's not going to seal there properly, it's not going to, you know, the bearing's not going to be pushed on there properly, it's not going to have the whole surface area. So, you know, you can get away, I've, I've, got, I've got away with it before by just using bearing retainer, you know, put it in there, whack it in there, hope for the best, you know. And, you know, it might last you a six months, it might last you forever, but, but it's not the ideal way, it's not the, the way to do it. But, um, yeah, we, if someone can make these, you know, a couple of thousand bigger, you know, you can save a lot of rotors, you know, in, 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 in a way, I think. Yeah, maybe someone, maybe one of someone could think about that for the boys that's using uh, second-hand parts. It's got to be done. It's got to be possible to be done. Uh, yeah. Well, that's it. It's, it's a part. Done deal. Well done, boys. <laughs>
Like and subscribe. Yeah, like and subscribe. Yeah, boom. For more of this stuff. Yeah, for more of that. Nice, bro.